by all means. But I do want to give you a heads up every time before I dive in and do that just in case. So goals for today, learn how to use its learning and get your courses ready to go for this school year. Practice utilizing some of those basic tools on its learning. And then ideally, if we have time at the end, practice accessing some of your online curriculum tools as well. So why it's learning? Why do we have this tool? What does it do? Why do I have an account? So it's learning is our district learning management system. And we picked it's learning about five years ago, I think technically six. Um, I think five is when the, we use it full time. But what it's learning does is it allows us one common place to house all of our lessons and get all of our content and pieces like that. So if you have maybe taught in another district or used an online learning management system, maybe in your schooling up until this point, maybe it was Canvas or Blackboard, Schoology, uh, Google Classroom, Moodle, there's all different kinds of them out there. Um, this is another version of one of those tools. So It's Learning is our place for our lessons. All of our students have It's Learning accounts from kindergarten up into senior year, and all of our teachers and staff members have access as well. So even if you're not a general education teacher, you have an It's Learning account, your access might look a little bit different than a teacher who maybe has a classroom of students they interact with every single day, but you still have the ability to interact with students online. We use It's Learning for any virtual learning days, and it's a really helpful resource if you know you're gonna be out of office and have sub plans, it's a place to house them there. You can even use It's Learning as a part of artifacts or examples of how you've been improving your teaching practice whenever you have your teacher evaluation in your meetings with your evaluator. We had a few more people jump in. Um, I'm gonna add the link in one more time. Um, and my name is Brittany Coomer, by the way. I realized I got into this without introducing myself because I got excited. Um, and you probably have, will be hearing from me if you haven't already. A lot over email, I typically send out quite a few district emails, mainly because I work in all of our buildings. So it's, it's easier for me to talk with you guys over email than it is to stop into your building nonstop because we have 18 buildings, interact with you there. Um, and I'm probably going to send you something at the end of this session today. And it's just a getting started checklist for using your It's Learning course to get you started for the start of school because there's quite a bit to its learning so it's helpful if you have a reference and a way to kind of make a big topic seem a little bit more manageable and chunked and smaller so i'm adding in slide deck there you go all right so logging into its learning everyone should have its learning accounts and access at this point if you don't have all of your courses yet um, send me a message in the chat and I will write your name down as one to double check on, but we did finish uploading all those courses over the weekend. Um, so to log in to It's Learning, you access It's Learning. It's best if you use Google Chrome as your browser. I'm sure Nick has probably talked about that in his sessions before this, and even um, some of the PowerSchool sessions probably talked about that as well. But Chrome is the browser of choice for using It's Learning too. And your login information is going to be the same as your email information, uh, logging into your Google accounts, and even logging onto your device or computer. So that's helpful. It's not one other password for you to remember. It's the same one as some of your other systems. And to get to It's Learning, there are a couple of different ways you can get there. The easiest way is if you were on your BCSC device. It's an icon on your desktop right here. It's the orange one that says It's. Double click that, you can log in right there. If you are using Google Chrome browser, the other way you can get to It's Learning, if you open a new tab, there's this little piece here that says BCSE bookmarks. And you can select It's Learning from there, from that bookmarks, and there's a screenshot here that shows that. If you are using maybe a home computer and that BCSE bookmarks piece isn't showing up and you don't have It's Learning on your desktop or you're using a Chromebook, you can also get to It's Learning from the district website, which is bcseschools.org, right below the scrolling fancy video on our district website. There is a specific button for It's Learning on the far right. You click that, it takes you to the login screen. And your students access It's Learning through those same ways as well. So they have 
little bookmarks bar and it can go to the district website. So any questions over just accessing its learning? Hopefully we're good to go there. All righty. And as I go through some of this, if you want me to back up on any steps, just let me know. You can send a message or unmute yourself. Um, and I'm happy to do that. So it's learning, like I was saying, is a little bit of a bigger piece than maybe some of the other tutorial sessions you've been in today. It's, it's great because there's so many tools and features that might seem a little overwhelming at first. So my biggest piece of advice to you is don't try to build Rome in a day. Master a few tools, practice, play around with things, and kind of tinker along as you, as you dive into this tool. And don't, don't feel like you have to learn every single feature right away before the start of school. Most people don't. That's definitely not what I did when I started my first year of teaching here in BCSC. It was also our first year using its learning, so it was quite a big learning curve for everyone. So thankfully, now that we've had this for a few years, there's quite a few instructional resources out there you can fall back on. It's tutorial guides. Um, you can even connect with people in your buildings who have been using this, and your department chairs, your principals, and they can show you different resources so you don't feel like you have to master this all on your own. And if you ever were wondering, how do I play around with features and items and activities on its learning, but have it to where my students can't see them? Every single person, every single person who's an account on its learning, a teacher, has a sandbox course. And the sandbox course is just for you to play. It's a really kind of dorky name that they give it that, but it's a place for you to play around and no students are ever added to that course. So that's what's great for, especially since you're new teachers, learning how to use its learning is you can play around with things in your sandbox course and none of your students ever have to see it and you don't have to worry about them getting confused by anything. It's just there for you to play around with. You can also ask your building administrator or your department chair. if You can be added to a colleagues at learning course as well if you wanna see what they're doing and kind of have a frame of reference for your stuff. So we are going to be diving in to its learning here soon. I'm just gonna warn you, I go back and forth between these slides and its learning quite a bit because I feel like it's pretty important for me to show you what this actually looks like in the platform. So to get to your its learning courses, first you have to log in. Um, and then across the top, there's a toolbar here and you might have a few less buttons than what I do. You probably don't have an admin and some of these other ones, but courses is where you'll get to all of your its learning courses. And a key thing here, if you've already done this, you might think, well, some of these, I have a lot more courses than maybe I thought I should. All elementary teachers, you have an its learning course made for every subject that you teach during the day. So if you are a general education elementary school teacher, you'll have one for writing, you'll have a math, you'll have an AM homeroom, a PM homeroom. And the reason for that is all of the its learning courses are created based on your schedule on PowerSchool and you have classes for every single of those subject areas on PowerSchool, and we just pull from that. My tip to you, though, is do not scatter your lesson resources and content across all seven or eight of those courses. That's not only confusing for you to have to manage all of those courses, but it's also confusing for your students. So elementary teachers, I would recommend putting all of your lesson things and all of your content into one It's Learning course. And typically what other teachers in BCSE do is they use their AM homeroom course. That's what I would recommend you using as well. If you are a secondary teacher, so a middle school or high school teacher, and you teach a general education subject like English, social studies, science, math, C4, anything along those lines, then you have one course for all of your class periods. So for example, um, I was a social studies teacher, so I taught U.S. history, and I taught U.S. history class periods one, two, and three during the day. I didn't have three its learning courses for those three class periods. I had one U.S. history course. All three of my class periods were in that course, and I could sort my students in there. So you don't have to worry about managing all those different classes. If you are a special education teacher, your its learning account is going to look a little bit different in that you don't have like a specific um, AM homeroom or maybe a guided study course yet, 
we can make one of those for you. You should have a sandbox course if that's something that you want to play around with. Some of you might have, if you're a special education teacher, might have a guided study course because that's a part of your schedule on PowerSchool and your students will be added to that soon if they aren't already. Looks like I got a message. Heather, I will add you to your new tech courses. Sometimes it forgets to add teachers to courses when they teach in multiple buildings, but I will get you added. No problem. All right. You do not have to add your students to your course. I did not mean to stop sharing there. Sorry, guys. No, your students are being uploaded right now. That file that we use for that has 11,000 students in it. So it processes really slowly initially at the start of the year. Uh, you'll have students in your classes, I would say tomorrow morning, if not later tonight, that file is still, still going and we sent it up a few hours ago. Um, and don't ever worry about having to remove students from your class throughout the school year either that automatically syncs. So overnight is when we do our it's learning sync. So if you ever have a student who leaves or new students who's added, as long as they are in power school, the next day they'll show up on it's learning. I know in some other um, learning management systems, you have to add your own students. That, that's not the case for it's learning. We take that heavy lifting out for you. Your courses aren't finished. Yes, you can hide and deactivate things. I'll show you that in a second. All right, so course navigation bar. When you go into one of your classes that you selected from the courses drop down menu, here is your course toolbar of ways of navigating through that. So, overview is a start page for your course. Some of you have that as your start page, some of you don't. Um, plans is a way of organizing your course, it's one of two ways you can organize your course. Resources is where anything and everything you make on its learning, it all goes there. You can always find everything in your resources tab. Follow-ups, reports, and 360 reports are reporting to show you what assignments maybe you need to give feedback on um, and to get an idea on student activity in your course. That's what 360 reports does. And then the more button gives you options to configure some settings in your course, like the color of your course icon, um, adding a course nickname if you want to, and configuring additional settings for your class. So I am going to dive into the platform now. All right, and I am in a sample course right here. So you might have noticed this if you've been in your courses, especially if you are a general education teacher, that there's already some pieces in your course. Um, and the reason for that is that after we did e-learning for the last nine weeks, we realized the need for having a little bit more consistency across the district because it was confusing for a parent and for a student if none of the courses looked the same and they had to go to different places to find the lessons for the day and their homework. So we have added in some templates for you to use to help you organize your course and keep it a little bit more consistent. So if I go to the resources tab in my course, I can see some of the content and pieces that have been added there. And this is one that I play around in quite a bit. So there's gonna be a little bit of a difference here than maybe what you see. Um, but there are some pieces that have already been included in your course. And this first one is a course homepage. And you have the ability to edit and play around with things on this home page. Now, if you're looking at it this first time, you might think, I don't see where I have the ability to do that. I don't have any of these pencil icons and things like that. And that's because you need to make your own copy of this. So because this course was created from a template, I, me, Brenny, I'm still the owner of all of those pieces in your course because I was the one who made it. You just have to break the connection to my original copy and make it your own. And the reason I'm showing you this is because it's really important that when you're looking in your courses and adding content to them that you have a nice, clean welcome to your students, something that's easy for them to navigate, something that's straightforward, they know where to go. And this course homepage is a really great way of doing that. But at first, it probably doesn't look that exciting because it's just here for you to fill in some information. So if I'm on my course homepage and I wanna be able to edit that, but I don't see the option to do so, I click this three dot button here in the top corner. There is a button that will give me the option to make a copy. I'm gonna toggle this one because this one, I do not have it set up yet. 
So I'll click the three dot button and create own copy. And this is going to allow me to have my own version of this page so that I can add my own customized information to or delete, move things around if I need to. So I'll click create own copy. And then it prompts me to refresh the page. And I have to do that before I can start editing. All right, so now I can edit these pages and delete things, change things if I need to. So if I don't want that video there anymore, I could delete it. All right, so if you're getting started with its learning and you want to use some of these template pieces that are in there, that's the important first thing you'll need to do is click that three dot button, create own copy, confirm create own copy, and refresh the page. And now I can edit and add features to this page. And there's really two ways of organizing your It's Learning course. There's using pages like this. And a page on It's Learning is like the name implies, it's a web page. You can add in links, pictures, embed YouTube videos, add slides. You can add virtually anything to a page. So that's one option that a lot of teachers use when they're first starting out with It's Learning to organize their lessons. And they make maybe a page for the week or a page for every day of the week. And that's how they structure it. The other way that teachers organize their classes is using the plans feature on its learning. And I might, I might stay away from that here at the beginning of this presentation because that one's a little bit more complex. Um, and it's really better to move towards plans after you've mastered some of these other pieces. So if I am starting out with its learning, I'll have my page here. I can edit, add content, do all those fun pieces. And if I want to add some pictures here or make my own welcome video to welcome students to my course, a page is where I can do that because it's so flexible. If I want to add a different content block, maybe add in if you've been making some of the Bitmoji classrooms or a picture of yourself or anything along those lines, I will click add content block. Then there's some options that come up, but the one you'll want to pick is rich content. Images doesn't give you the option to really add much more than just a picture. You can't really change the size a whole lot either. A file is just uploading a file from your computer. Um, and then a poll is a really short poll for your students, as the name implies. But rich content is where you have the options to add in all of these other multimedia pieces. So, say, add a title to my content block. And I can type out information here. I want to change my font style and size. I can do that all over here, make it a little bit easier for my students to see, and change the text, color, highlight it, uh, special characters there if you're a math teacher and you want to add in some of those pieces. Formatting options, again, more special characters here, lists and bullet points. This bottom part of this toolbar here is really where all of the magic happens. And if there's one feature on its learning that makes your class and your resources more universal design, so more UDL friendly, it's this toolbar and it's called the Rich Text Editor. I always call it the It's Learning Toolbar because most people seem to call it that and the other one's a little bit of a mouthful to say. But the It's Learning Toolbar here is where you have all of these options to add in different media. So if I wanted to put a link here, maybe to my syllabus, type out syllabus, and if I hover over these buttons, it'll tell me what they are. This toolbar is everywhere on its learning and your students also have this toolbar when they go to answer an assignment. So they have all these choices as well to add links and pictures and things. So if this is where I wanna put my course syllabus, I can type it out and this link button, if I hover over, it'll tell me it's right there. And let's just pretend like this slideshow is my syllabus, which I guess it kind of is in a sense because you all are my students right now. So if I wanted to use the hyperlink button, I'll type out my text, highlight it, so that's what I want it to read as, and I'll click the link button, and I'll paste in my link right there. If you use keyboard shortcuts, it's the same, control V. I'll click OK, and it turns blue, and that's how I know that it's hyperlinked. So I can put my syllabus there. 
if I wanted to add pictures onto here as well, I have a couple of options. I keep going down along the line here. I can add emojis if I want. Um, web files just pulls from existing it's learning content, which you probably won't have a whole lot yet. But the image button here is where I can add in a picture. I click picture. I have a couple of choices here. I can upload something that's saved on my computer already. So I was a social studies teacher, so I'm going to add in this globe. I'll select something from my computer and it puts it right there. And then I'll do upload and insert. And I'm pretty sure that was actually a GIF. So we're going to see how that lays out. Yeah, there we go. And I can resize it if I want. The other option here, if going through that process, I, I'm all about keyboard shortcuts and saving time and going through here and uploading every single picture that I want to have in my course is a little bit clunky to me. So sometimes what I do is I see a picture and I want to add that into my course. I will copy that onto my clipboard. And sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes you can just copy and paste it directly without having to use that picture upload method. And I'll just paste it. And there we go. So I have, I can upload pictures through the picture icon here, or I can try copying and pasting and putting them there. You can also make your pictures and have them serve as a hyperlink. So that's a great way, especially if you're an elementary teacher. I don't know if we have any primary grade teachers in here right now, but if you teach students that are still learning how to read, sometimes having to read this big word is a little scary and hard for them. So you could tell them that click the globe or click the picture and that will take you to a learning resource for the day. So you can make your picture a hyperlink. So let's say that I want this globe to be my syllabus if someone clicks it. So I'm gonna grab my link here again. You'll see a lot of elementary teachers use this and now a lot of secondary teachers are using this too. But what I'll do is make this picture a hyperlink. So I'll need to select it just like I did the syllabus text, select it, click my link button, paste in my link and click okay. Whenever I'm finished editing this specific content block, I'll click okay. And it's finished there. And now I can test out my links by clicking. And there we go. So I click my picture and open the slideshow I wanted it to. And if I click syllabus, same thing. So that is how you can add some pictures and links using this rich text editor. And I know it probably seems like I'm spending a lot of time on this one page, but it's because if you master this toolbar, then you're pretty much all good to go from there. Uh, other things that are helpful to know on this toolbar is that if you want to have a video here telling your students how excited you are that they're going to be in your class and you can't wait to see them, you don't have to necessarily go to like a Flipgrid or a video recording tool to make a video. It's Learning has its own video recording tool built in to it. It's all within this toolbar. So I can add an audio recording or I can do a video. So if I hover over video, it'll tell me and I'll click video. And it's probably not going to like me clicking this button right now because I'm currently using my camera to be on Zoom with all of you. So if I have a video that's saved, I can upload it. Otherwise, I would click record. Yeah, it doesn't like that I'm using my camera microphone for this. But I would give it access to use my camera microphone. I would click record. And it's, it's going. And then click stop. And then it uploads it right there. And I have a video all within this content block as well. And same thing with audio, I would click audio and I could record right then and there or upload from a file. When we were doing e-learning last nine weeks, a lot of teachers would just record within its learning and tell their students, this is what you're doing for the day. Uh, this is how you can get in touch with me and would just have video instructions for the lessons and they felt like students really benefited from that. All right. Yes, you can link to a YouTube video on your course homepage. Yep. So YouTube videos, if you use maybe YouTube to make a video of yourself to welcome your students, or you just want to have a video on here to welcome them to your class, 
You want to have it embedded. You can always add a hyperlink like what I did with that syllabus. But if I wanted to embed a video, I really hope this sounded loud. I would go to my video here on YouTube. And if you're an elementary teacher, there's a key thing that you need to do here first before you put your video anywhere. There's this little approve button and that just makes it so that it's approved for BCS and your students can watch it. Now, 99% of the time the videos are approved because another teacher has probably gone on there and done that. But if not, make sure you click approve. And once I've done that, I'll click the share button on YouTube. And I always like to grab the embed code, but you could technically grab this just share code here. You embed and copy. I'll go back to It's Learning. And there's two ways you can embed a video. There's the embed button right here. That's one way. Or there's the source button. For videos, it's probably easier if you just use the embed button. I'll click embed. And it brings up this embed thing. So we're going to paste that code we copied. And voila, it gives a preview of that video. And I'll click insert. And now my video has been embedded and I can resize that if I want, make it a little bit bigger. Whenever I'm finished, I'll click OK. So now I have a video embedded on my page too. And that's exactly what I did over here for this one. All right, so that is setting up your home page for success. Now, so you have your home page ready and you're feeling great, but you're like, okay, I want to add a link to maybe my daily lesson page because if you've noticed in your course, you probably have a template for a daily lesson page or a weekly lesson page, however you want to organize that. And that again is to make sure that you have something to work with and you're not starting from scratch, not having to reinvent the wheel every single time. And so you have an example way of structuring your lesson on its learning. So the example that's in your page might be a little bit more simple. Still loading. All right, might be a little bit more simple than the one I'm showing you right now, but this is just because I plugged in some content on my own. It has all the same features as what you would have on your uh, lesson template. So it's probably called lesson, daily lesson page in your course. And if you can't edit it right away, it's that same process. I'll click the three dot button and then make my own copy and refresh the page. And then I have a little pencil button here to add my own resources. And I can always rearrange the order of these things too by dragging and dropping. And I can change my layout here. You don't have a ton of options. You have three, but you still have choice. So you can pick that. Uh, I personally am like a split screen type of person. I like mine this way, but I know a lot of elementary teachers like to do the one column. So with like a scrolling, scrolling content block there for their students. So that's just, personal preference. If your students are using um, an iPad or they're using a Chromebook, it, it'll look the same on either device, no matter what layout that you pick. All right, so let's say that this is my daily lesson page and I wanna add my content or I already have. So I put my, my welcome video on there, all the same steps that I showed you guys in the home page. I typed out my learning goal here, which is to use the page feature on its learning, I out some instructions, Everything's good to go there. But I want to make sure my students clearly know how to get to this lesson page. So my first thing that I'm going to do is change the title of my page so that it has the date on it. So if you are on a page, if you double click or hover here and click the pencil button, double click will do the same thing. But this is where I can change the name of the page. And it's best if you put some type of date there so it's clear to your students on when they did this lesson and when this took place. So I almost put July, but it's definitely August. And of course, every time I type in front of someone is when I always have a typo. There we go. So I can change my name of my page here so it's obvious when this lesson took place. But I also want to make sure that my students know how to get to this page. So technically, yes, like with everything on its learning, if I click resources and click the resources button and I can get to anything and everything in my course through the resources tab. But 
if I want to make it even easier for my students, I made this awesome home page. Why not add a link to my daily lesson page from this home page so that my students don't have to guess, they don't have to take multiple clicks to get to my page through resources. Maybe they just click the start button and it takes them to that lesson page. So the way that you do that is you'll already have to have your daily lesson page made. It doesn't have to be finished. You don't have to have it completely edited, but you have to have it at least made. And what we're going to do is copy the link address to this specific element on its learning this page and link it as a hyperlink on our homepage. So I can either copy the URL up here, that's a specific link to this element in my course, or you notice here on the left-hand side, this also shows anything and everything I've made in my It's Learning course. So what I'm going to do is use this little version over here on the left-hand side, because I think it's a little bit faster. So I'm on this August 3rd page. I'm gonna hover over it and it turns blue, and that's how you know you're hovering over it. I'm gonna right-click, I'm gonna click copy link address. Or the other way I could do this is be on my August 3rd lesson page, copy the URL across the top of my screen. Then I'm gonna to go to my course homepage. And I wanna make this content block for this lesson. Right, so I'm gonna delete some of these pieces. All right, so I still have that copied link address on my clipboard. I doubt my text, I'm gonna highlight it, link button, and I'm gonna paste. And you know you copied the right thing is it usually ends in element ID and has a bunch of numbers and things there. And at the front, it's gonna say it's learning. All right, so that tells you that you copied an element within its learning. I'll click OK. Let's say I also want this picture. So if they press the start button, it takes them to that lesson page as well. And I'll click my picture here. And I'm going to delete what I already had there. You probably don't have a link, but if you do, you'll delete it. I'm going to paste in that copied August 3rd link address page, and I'll click OK. You know that it's a hyperlink now because it turned blue. I'll click OK again. You'll, you'll click OK a lot on its learning if you haven't noticed. They always want to make sure you're very sure about what you're doing. And now my students are on my home page. They can either click the Start button and it takes them to the August 3rd lesson, or they click here where it says Link to Today's Lesson. And it opens it in a new tab so they can still get back to my home page here for my course if they want. Otherwise, they are in the day's lesson and they are all good to go from there. All right, so that's kind of a way of using the home page that's in your course and the daily lesson page to get, to get going. Other things that might be helpful if you're several weeks into the school year and you want to make sure that students can access your past lessons, it's a similar type of skill set here, similar process. Um, it's helpful if for your past lessons you organize them into folders and folders is a way of kind of filing away your resources on its learning and if you want to make a folder on its learning that's where I would put the past lessons in your pages so to make a folder you'll click your add button and the add button is where you can build content on its learning it only shows you a few resources here and these are the most popular ones on its learning what I've been working on right now and showing you guys is the page on its learning Folder is not on this list, so we're gonna click Show All. And here are where all the tools on its learning are located. This top section here are resources, and on my slide deck that I haven't gone back to for a little while here, it gives you a vocab reference sheet on what all of these different buttons and things do. The tools to know are page and folder in this section, in a folder, you can put anything in a folder, it just helps you stay organized. The section below here are activities, and activities on its learning are interactive pieces. So it's not just something your students look at, they can turn in work, they can participate, they can type responses, add audio, video. It's a very engaging tool, whereas all of the tools up here are just very much teacher tools 
ways for you to communicate information, students aren't interacting with it and editing, submitting things with those tools. So if I wanna add a folder, I'll select it. I can give it a title. All right, so that can be August 3rd, 7th, 7th is Friday, yep. And this can be my folder for that week. I can add other pieces here. If you notice that rich text editor is back where I can add video, audio. Usually people don't do that for folders, but you can. And here's where we have an option here. So by default, my folder is going to be active for everyone to see, myself and my students. If I don't want this to be active yet, maybe this is a folder I'm making for upcoming lessons, or I just don't want them to be in it yet, I can select no. And that means that me as a teacher, I can still see this folder and everything in it, but my students can't get to it. Or I can even set it to where it's active for only a certain time span. And you can get very precise in how you do that. So for this example, I'm gonna keep it active. So I'll click save. And then it gives me this folder where now I can start adding pieces to it. If I click the add button, I can build from scratch to this folder. Um, or I can go up one level. This is my resources tree on its learning again. And if I wanted to move something into this August 3rd folder, I could do that. So I have a couple of ways I can do that. If I wanna move this home page, I can select it, action, move to. And then I can select the folder from there. There it is, August 3rd and 7th. The other thing I can do is over here on this left-hand toolbar is my resource tree again. Let's say that the piece that I wanna add into this August 3rd folder is in another folder right now, like this page of this August 3rd lesson that we were working on. I can either select it from here, do action, move to, like I was just showing you there, or I can drag and drop into that folder. And it asks me if I wanna move it there, I would click yes. And now in my August 3rd folder, I have my August 3rd lesson. Okay, so if you start mapping things out, maybe you make folders for all the different weeks during the school year, or you structure your folders to where it's names of your units that you're studying, you probably don't want students diving into all that content right away. Or maybe if you're just still building them, you don't want them to see something that's not a finished product. So another quick way to make things active to your students or to make things inactive or hidden from them is on your resources tab, it shows everything in your course. And over here it says active, yes or no. If I toggle this to no, it gives me a prompt here if it's a folder and I can deactivate everything in that course. And I would click yes. Everything in that course, everything in that folder, excuse me. Um, so now I can still see this as the teacher, but now my students can't. They will not see this in student view. So that's a really quick way of hiding things from your student and then you can slowly go through and activate them. If I wanna activate everything back in this folder again, I would click yes. And it asks me, do you want everything active? I would click yes. If I didn't, then it won't activate anything in that course, um, in that course folder until I go through and do that one by one. It's the same thing here. If you have a bunch of folders, you don't have to do that one by one. You can click all of them, action, activate or deactivate. If you teach, uh, maybe uh, you really made a nice cool homepage for one of your classes and you wanna reuse that in another one, at least some of the pieces of it, you can also copy things to different courses on its learning. So maybe if I wanna use the same course homepage for my US history class as my sociology class and I can tweak some things but I don't want to reinvent the wheel, I could click and select the item, action, copy to. It can, I can also select different courses here from this drop down menu to select and uh, copy it into as well. So that's a helpful thing to know that if you change classes at the end of the first semester, you don't ever have to worry about technically reinventing anything on its learning. You can always copy things and then rework them and tweak them from there. Right, so that is hiding and deactivating things. I have a good question in here. I'm using a lot of slide presentations. Can you have a hyperlink in a Google slide leading back to a resource or folder 
or assignment on its learning? Technically, yes. So if maybe on the slide deck I have for you guys, I wanted to have a link to this course that I'm playing around in, maybe this August 3rd lesson, I could copy the top URL here and put that in my slide deck, but your students need to sign into its learning first. So I hope that answers your question, Mary Ellen. You can always copy the top URL here. Yep, they would just have to sign in. They'll be prompted to sign in if they aren't. Chances are they probably are signed in, but it's a good question. All right. So that is how you can structure your course and get things going there. Um, the next, the last two things I'm going to show you before I give you guys time to play around and ask questions and things like that. Um, if you want to start playing around with how to have students turn in work to you on its learning, there are a lot of tools within this platform, but if there's one that I would strongly recommend that you start using or at least practice with at the start of school, it's the assignment tool on its learning. It's the most flexible one out there and it's the one that's the most popular tool on its learning for a reason. So to build an assignment on its learning, I would click the add button here. Or you can click the add button here as well. There's multiple ways to add content, but it's the first one that comes up because it's the most popular tool. So I would click assignment. Maybe. There we go. It's slowly loading for me. And now I'm in the assignment builder. So why use this tool on its learning? It's one common place for your students to turn in their work. So if you're having them do digital work, digital products, writing essays, things like that, they can all turn it in here so it's not scattered through your email or anywhere else. It's also great for giving students a common place to turn in their work. And if you want to give them options of having a digital option in class, this is the way of doing that. So um, I was a socialized teacher, so my students took notes quite a bit. They always have the option of taking paper notes in my class, but if I wanted to give them the ability to do a digital note and turn in like a Google Doc or a slideshow to me, I would set up an its learning assignment and they have the ability to turn it in there if that's the option that they picked. So I would go to add and then select assignment. You have to give it a title. So maybe this is Nile River. So I gave it a title. And here's where I put the assignment description. So maybe this is the instructions for the assignment. Um, I could add in slideshows and pictures here. Maybe I have an audio or a video recording of me explaining the assignment instructions. If maybe it's a little bit lengthier of an assignment. I can add a link here that goes along with it as well if I wanted to. The description isn't required, but it's probably best practice to give students a reminder on what the expectations are for the assignment and then to also include a due date there as well. I can also add files to this too. So if I don't want to add a link, but I just want to add something directly from my Google Drive or my computer, if I click add files. I have the option to do that. I can select something saved to my computer or I can pair my BCSE Google account with this. The first time you use this, it might ask you to give its learning permission to your Google Drive. You'll want to do that just so you have the ability to add in some of these pieces. And after you do, you can add anything from your Google Drive to an its learning assignment and to its learning. So I have quite a few of these mainly because I use this example all the time. So once I find my resource, maybe this is my note sheet. I think I'm actually one. I'm gonna go with this one. I'll find my slideshow. My students have that as a reference for when they complete the assignment. And it gives me the option here, it says students can view. So that means that when students go to answer this assignment, they'll see this little icon here that means it's Google resource. They can click it and view through my slides. But they only have a view only ability. They can't edit or do anything with that. Let's say that I want to give my students a resource and maybe I want to scaffold note taking for them or I want to give them a worksheet and I don't want to have to ask them all to click file, make a copy in Google or not to worry about sharing it to each individual person. It's learning has the ability to send each students their own copy of a Google Doc or a Google resource and it gives them editing access to that and it names the file after the student so you don't get any no name assignments turned into you. So what I can do is I would click add files again. I would click Google Drive. And for this specific example, 
this was a vocabulary activity and I had a specific vocab format, note taking format I wanted my students to use. So I didn't just want to send them a blank Google Doc, I wanted to give them a scaffolded version, but I did not want to have to sit there and send this to all 150 of my students um, or to ask them to click file and make a copy because some of them would get lost in that process or maybe wouldn't get the resources they needed. So I'm going to go to my Google Drive, I'm going to find the file that I want, I'll click select. And instead of just keeping this that students can view, I'm going to click make a copy for each student. So now what's going to happen is when students go to answer this assignment, they'll have their own Google Doc of this worksheet made for them, they'll have their own editing access to it and they can type away. And when they go to turn in their assignment, they don't have to dig through the Google Drive. It's learning keeps that assignment there for them, that Google Doc for them, and all they have to do is click submit. So that is a fairly new feature within its learning in the last year and a half or so. And it's amazing, it's helpful. Even if you're not wanting to give your students a full on scaffolded worksheet, it's helpful to give them maybe just a Google Doc there so they know that Google Doc is how you want them to turn it in. Or if you're giving them a way of writing an essay and you want to give them a little bit more support, you can do that. You can even make a checklist on a Google Doc or a Google Sheet and use this tool to send students a checklist so they have their own ability to cross off those items without having to make their own copy. It makes it for them. So I've added my resources there and I'm all good to go. Over here on the right hand side, this is where your assignment settings are and this is only visible to the teacher. So you can set the time span that students can see this assignment. So if you only want it visible for a certain period of time, you have that option. You can add a deadline to this assignment as well. You can have it close after that deadline. If you close it, then there won't be any ability for students to turn it in late. So I typically did not do that because a student was absent, but you can close it if you would like. Homework just makes it so that students get a notification when they sign on that tells them that it's homework. So I would typically just check that so they saw a notification, even if it wasn't something they were supposed to do outside of class. The assessment scale here on the settings. So on its learning, we don't have a connection between our gradebook and its learning yet. There is a test server that's running reports and crunching numbers for that right now, and they're experimenting before we roll it out. So any feedback and grading that you do on its learning assignments won't transfer over to PowerSchool. You'll still have to manually answer that. But if you wanted to use some of the grading skills that other BCSE teachers have put on here, they are options that you can use. And you are welcome to do that. Uh, other things here, if you wanted to use this tool for um, peer assessments, you could. It would give this, another student in the class randomly this assignment and they could look it over and give feedback. Results means that if you give students feedback on this assignment, they would see it. Plagiarism control does work in a Google Doc. It goes through any attachments that students answer. So if they type something out and copied it from Wikipedia, it would tell you. And those are your settings. So whenever you're finished, you would click Create Assignment. And it usually does take it a second here, especially since I added some Google resources. Slowly but surely, I'm gonna let that load here for a second. But that is one tool on its learning that I would get some familiarity with because it's pretty fantastic. Other things to know, uh, there's the ability to view an assignment and view your whole course as a student, so you get it from their perspective and you can see if your course needs to make some changes or not. So, okay, let's finish loading. So here's my assignment. I'm still in teacher view right now, so I don't have the ability to turn in anything. I got ahead of myself. If you want to view your course as a student, you can even preview your assignment to see if it looks the way you want. So below your profile on its learning, there's a little person icon. It's beside that add button where we made the assignment. If I click that, I can view my course as a pupil. And it automatically takes you back to the very start of your course. So this is a really great way of seeing what your course looks like as soon as students click into it. And I'll go to resources. And there's my assignment. And right now I'm doing this as a student, so I have the ability to answer. So there is my slideshow. And if I click answer, 
going to give me my own version of that Google Doc, like what I said. And it does take it a second, but it's going to name this document after me. And it would do the same for your students. So if you had a student, John Smith, it would name this John Smith Nile River Vocabulary. And now I have my own ability to edit and type on this. And whenever I was ready to turn this in to my teacher, I would just click submit. If I wanted to go back and continue working on it, I could click open or just click where it is right there. To toggle out of student view, drop down menu and back to view as teacher. For me, it's administrator, but for you, it'll be teacher. Last thing, and then we have five minutes for questions and decompressing, because I know I've been talking to you for quite a bit, is the messaging tool on its learning. So this is another must know. So course organization, pages, folders, assignment tool, messaging tool is the last thing to know. So you have enough school skills and tools here to be dangerous. So if you click the messaging icon, it's beside your profile um, and click new. You can send messages to individuals, so specific students in your classes or other teachers, or you can send it to your whole class if you don't feel like typing out all 30 or 100 something names if you teach multiple sections. So if I want to send this to all of the students in my class, I would click the little search icon here. I can click find course and search for my course name. I want to send this to a specific person. If I start typing their name, it will bring up all users in BCSC and I can message them. Students only have the ability to message their teacher directly, especially at the elementary level. Um, the only way students can message each other on its learning is if you, the teacher opens up a group chat, which you can do if you message a whole class, or if you're messaging your whole class, you can just send it as an individual conversation between you and the student. So if I want to type my message here, I could say, hello. And I could add attachments if I wanted, things on my computer. If I paste a link here, it'll show up as a hyperlink. Whenever I'm finished, I'll click send. And there are my messages between me and that student. And if I wanted to see more of them, I could click here. You wanted to add your own profile picture too, because I know some of you probably do. You click where your name is and edit profile. You have the ability to add a picture. I do ask though that please do not change your email address right there because that by default it syncs with your BCSC Google account and your BCSC email. And if you change that, it could cause some problems with your account and I have to reset it. So add your profile picture, just don't change your email. All right, I'll give you guys time now to ask questions or if you want me to show something else I can. Uh, Fodder added, I will manually do that for you, Kristen. No problem. Yes, Mary Ellen, this is recording right now. So after I finish recording, I'll send it to you guys. And if you want just snippets, not a full hour of me talking, you click courses. All of you should be added to a course called BCSE Connect. And I know an hour is a long time to listen to me, so I totally understand if you want the, the abridged version of this, the shorter version. So if you are on its learning and you click courses and just start typing in BCSE Connect, all of you are added to a course called BCSE Connect, which is our professional development course. And once you get into that course, there's tons of tutorials and things, but the ones that you'll probably want are the ones over here called It's Learning. So if I click It's Learning, it brings up tons of folders and resources here. And this It's Learning tools and training and how to's has written guides and videos for all of the tools on It's Learning. But I'll also make sure I send you guys this video in case you do want to listen to the, the long winded version and have it for a reference. And I will send those of you an email who asked me to fix your specific courses so you know it's done. 
I have it all written down on a list here for me to do. If you have more questions, let me know. Otherwise, you guys are good to go. Thank you for being here and for being a part of BCSC. I'm excited for you.